Hello viewers, I am Professor G.S. Bajpayee at National Law University, Delhi. I welcome you to this course on research methodology. In the first module, we'll deal with basics of research. Now, the idea of this module is to give an orientation to the candidates about the fundamentals of research. In terms of learning objectives, this course will enable the candidates about the components of research, the different types of research, the different variables which are used in the field of research, and also the different methodologies that we talk about in the field of research. Whereas this course it is designed to give you a basic orientation as to how the legal research can be performed. We will talk about the layman's perspective in research and we will then try to enable the candidates about using advanced research methods. In the course of this research, we would be talking about the different types of legal research and what kind of research techniques which are used and this course will enable the participants about knowing the different models of research. In all, I guess this course will provide a whole orientation to the candidates about using various techniques of research methodology. To begin with the objective of research, let me highlight as to why the research is undertaken. Research is undertaken to resolve some problem that is confronted by individuals or the society. Now, there are various ways to approach this problem. Ordinary person in ordinary course may resort to some non-scientific methods to approach a particular problem. But in the domain of research, we try to approach this problem by applying scientific methodology and this is called systematic inquiry. Therefore, scientificity is the cardinal principle of research. Any research for, the, for its purpose can be applied fundamental, diagnostic, remedial and various kinds. But let us understand research is understood in terms of a process. Process means it includes a chain, a set of protocols, various steps. Now, these steps together are called a research process. We will discuss research process in more details in subsequent modules. But here, let me put it to you that there are non-research actions by ordinary people. You know, what do I mean by non-research actions by ordinary people? Because as I said, ordinary people may also resort to certain crude method of resolving a particular problem. Those methods may not satisfy the requirement of a scientific methodology. Therefore, these non-action research form a kind of ad hoc methods for solving certain inquiry. But here we are talking about research methodology which is systematic, which is coherent, which is ordered. So, let us understand that non-research actions could be time wasting and costly as compared to scientific research. And let us also understand that once research is undertaken, it leads to certain degree of knowledge which become useful for the purpose of strengthening a particular discipline in terms of contributing to fundamental knowledge or some applied objective. And therefore, I always say that a valid conclusion can only be drawn by a systematic inquiry. For the purpose of applied research or any policy research, the research inquiry relies on empirical methods or rely on survey methods to generate the data through which the valid conclusions could be drawn. 
we should also look at the relationship between the purpose of research and the kind of method which is applied for a particular research. This relationship offers interesting insights. I would say the type of method is determined and decided based on the type of research that is undertaken. And therefore, the knowledge is created as a consequence of a particular method that is applied. We call it research method as it applies certain types of techniques which are relevant to a particular problem. But the end objective is to validate the impressions or the conclusion that we intend to do. Sometimes we have very strong positions and opinion with respect to certain issues. Those impressions and ideas continue to be abstract and impressionistic unless they are validated by certain amount of data. Now, what is the source of data? Data is explored by applying certain research methodology, by applying certain research techniques. Now, these techniques are peculiar to a type of research problem. It is very important for us to know that in social science or in law, we face variety of problems. These problems may relate to human beings, society, social institutions, legal institutions or other kinds of issues. Now, at times you are dealing with living objectives and sometimes you are dealing with non-living objectives. Living objectives means human beings are the group of people. Non-living objectives are non-living material could be the books music, other kinds of digital format, which you can experience, but you cannot interact with. So, you have a challenge to collect the necessary data to generate the required amount of knowledge by interacting with those sources. Here, since we are talking about the purpose, importance and objective of research, we have to keep in mind at the beginning of research as to what kind of research are we undertaking. If our research involves some non-living sources like newspaper or television, can you do some research based on that because it is a one-sided medium. In fact, this course is supposed to offer a variety of techniques to call out the data from these non-living sources and it can offer some very interesting insights into any problem that you are trying to explore. And we would also look at how the purpose of research can be acquired by applying a particular type of research methodology. And as a researcher or as a learner, what is required is the fact that there should be enough tools and techniques in your toolkit. And once your toolkit is enriched, you are confident as a researcher to go ahead with exploring any research problem. For instance, if you try to approach a funding agency who is interested to hire you for getting a research study done on election issues or slums issues or any issues which is bothering the system or the state as a policy matter. Now, this kinds of issues often require long drawn surveys, uh, surveys which are located in various parts of the country. You might have to undertake a survey which is nation, nationwide and in this way you will have to imbibe those techniques which could be helpful in collecting the requisite degree of data to validate your conclusion. When I say to validate your conclusion, I wish to revisit my idea which I have said in the beginning of this lecture that at times you may be knowing so many things through common sense. What is the difference between knowing a thing in terms of common sense and through a research? Sometimes you may be intrigued to find that 
something which is emerging from research is already the part of a common sense knowledge. But common sense knowledge does not have a credit, accreditable basis and therefore, those conclusions cannot be relied on. Whereas, what emerges from research is treated as something uh, the uh, reliable outcome. So, reliable outcome which in terms of research is understood to be valid and reliable is the hallmark of any research. Viewers, in this video we have dealt with the basic idea of research, its function, its objective and its importance. And through this video lecture, I have tried to show you as to how method and types of research are interlinked. In next video, we will be dealing with various types of research and their component, their structure as to how they can contribute to the different objectives of research.